So SV Boney has reached out to me and sent me their new SV240 filter. It's a multi-narrow band filter intended to be able to use no matter what you're imaging, whether it's galaxies or reflection or emission nebula. It's supposed to be kind of a, a general purpose, all-in-one filter. I've been testing with it for the past couple of weeks to see what kind of results we can get with it. Uh, full disclosure, SV Boney has sent this to me free of charge, but like always, my review is completely 100% my opinion. They have no say on what goes on in the video. So let's get to it my name is rich and you're watching deep space astro So we'll just open it up real quick to show you the case that it comes in. Not too much to go over. The filter did have these on the front and the back of it just to keep it from getting scratched during packaging. I took those off, obviously, already to use it. It is a two-inch mounted filter, so mounted meaning, obviously, that it's just in this aluminum ring with a, with a threaded connector versus just a piece of glass. So I just wanted to show you guys the case that you get with it. So as expected, something nice to keep it safe when it's not in use. We'll get this in the rig and do some testing with it. All right, so let's start with looking at the transmission graph from SV Boney's website. If you're not familiar with these graphs, just real quick, the way they work is on the left-hand side is your transmission percentage, so the amount of light it allows to pass through. And on the bottom, on the horizontal, these are the frequencies of light in nanometers. So the filter being a multi-narrow band filter is allowing HA, O3, H beta, and some light in infrared, so the near infrared areas. Uh, we'll start over here on the left-hand side. These peaks are indicating what light transmission is allowed through. And this one is allowing O3, which comes in at 500 nanometers on the spectrum, and H beta, which comes in at about 486. So you can see we got 450 and 500. We're about right a little bit past the middle, so that would put us around 475, 480, which covers both the 486 for H beta as well as the 500 for O3. Transmission rate is as high as it looks like about 96%. And then everything to the left and to the right, meaning these flat horizontal lines that sit on the zero transmission line, any light that comes down those frequencies, i.e. light pollution, will be blocked. Moving on to the next transmission peak that we see here, this is our HA, our hydrogen alpha which comes in at 656 nanometers. Again, you can see the 650 line right here. So just to the right of that will be where the 656 comes in. So you can see it allows that light to come through at, at about 97, 98% on the transmission rate. Again, anything before and after it on the zero line is being blocked. This wider band pass right here is our near infrared that it's going to allow in. And that comes in as high as almost, it looks like about 99%, right? It dips as it goes across, depending on which frequency in, in the infrared is, is passing through. And this part of it is supposed to give you a little bit better contrast in your images, as well as a better signal to noise ratio as you're moving through your session. Again, flat line, it's blocking everything else in the infrared region you really don't want to allow anything higher than this um you can have problems focusing you'll make especially in a refractor your stars will become bloated they're they're hard to focus again specifically with a refractor type telescope my testing that i've used this filter on was on my celestron edge hd 8 inch the camera that i was using is the poseidon c so i ran a series of tests on three different objects uh you know the graph is nice so you have an idea of what light you can expect to be coming in and which light you can expect to be blocked but the proof's in the pudding, right? I, I want to be able to see the differences between using the filter and not using the filter. So the approach I decided to take was to take a five minute exposure with the filter and then a five minute exposure without the filter, just so you have a comparison. So I started with the Whirlpool Galaxy, like I said, on the right hand side, this is no filter. And you can see how the image is a little bit brighter compared to the one on the left. And I should also state that all of these images that I'm showing you, the moon was down below the horizon and they were taken across two different nights. I'm also in a Bortle 5 zone. I'm about a 10 minute drive from a Bortle 4, so maybe a little bit darker where I'm at. But those are important things to know, right? The SV Boney says that these filters will work up to a Bortle 8 zone. So your mileage may vary on this. But again, so right hand side's no filter. 
left hand side is a filter of the whirlpool m51 here i'm not seeing any halos on the stars but generally when you when a filter causes halos my experience anyways it's mostly in a large bright star which obviously we don't have in the m51 area right now so again these are single exposures here and then what i did was i took six five minute exposures from each of them so we'll open those up so again on the right hand side is a stack without the filter and the left hand side is the stack with the filter now i did zero processing on these and this is the part that I was on the fence about how I wanted to approach it I'm sure all of you know you can process a set of data multiple times and it's gonna come out different every time right so I didn't feel that would be a fair comparison to do background extraction and start stretching color correction you know the normal workflow that we go through so what you're seeing right here is just an auto stretch view saved right out of serial I did absolutely nothing to either one of these images you know these are the results this is 30 minutes of each with and without the filter again without the filter is on the right with the filter is on the left so again you know we've got some gradients going on in this image with the filter not so much over here and you can see some differences in the galaxy right so if we zoom in a little bit more again you know you can see the lightness in the sky background has been cut down with the filter you can start to see in a little bit of red in the arms of the galaxy over here where we're on this side i really don't see much of that red but i am it does look like i'm seeing a little bit more detail the, the wispiness of the arms coming out here seem to be more prevalent without the filter so let's move on to the next object and once again right hand side is no filter left hand side is with the filter so this one i can see a big difference not only is the background a little bit darker knocking out the light pollution compared to the one without the filter but you can see it really helped pull out the o3 and the ha in the witch's broom image here one thing to point out and you know this is with the halo wing we were talking about before we do have a large star in our image I without a filter there is already a halo here but with the filter you can see it kind of made it worse you know and it's made it worse in the sense that the spikes that showed up in the stars without the filter are kind of choppy over here you know I'm assuming that's reflecting back off of the sensor into the filter that's causing that but the rest of the stars look the same I mean I'm not seeing any halos on the stuff up here in the corners even though again like I said you generally see that with uh with the larger stars so those are the single five minute experiments exposures with and without the filter so same thing these stacks are six five minute exposures so you're looking at 30 minutes of data right hand side is without the filter left hand side is with the filter you can see i've got some plane trails i had a low pretty low plane that zipped over here six images just wasn't enough for sigma clipping to remove it completely i could have played with the settings but again i didn't want to do too much with these these are auto stretch views again right out of serial you know same issue obviously still exists with the halos and the exaggeration of it with the filter over on the left hand side but if we look at the the structure of the witch's broom you can see again the differences between the two we've got a lot more color popping through because of the filter blocking the light pollution that was otherwise coming through without it let's jump in and look at the last one that i have here which is the iris nebula again filtered image is on the left unfiltered image is on the right hand side and similar to the other two images you can see if you look at the background the image with the filter is a little bit darker so it is knocking out some of the light pollution uh, one thing i noticed with this one though it seems like without a filter i can see a little bit more detail in the iris in the very faint areas right around this region here i can still see it it's probably hard for you guys to see with youtube's compression i can still see the structure but it's just not as pronounced behind the the filter you know obviously multiple images stacking you get more signal that i'll probably get pulled out but in a single five minute exposure it seems like yes it took the light pollution down for us but it also took away a little bit of detail from the dso as well so let's take a look at these stacked images and see how they fare out so no filter on the right filter on the left so this one is flipped because of the me hitting the meridian let's uh let's rotate this guy there we go so we got a better side by side comparison on the iris in the stack i am seeing more detail it's but all in all it you know it is knocking down the light pollution again border five four and a half not that bad where i live and, and again you know with the unevenness of the background obviously that can be taken care of with background extraction and everything i just wanted to focus on what the filter is blocking and what it is not blocking give you 
you guys a good side by side for everything so it's a nice light pollution filter right if you're looking at getting ha and o3 you get that band pass as tight as you can then this isn't the filter for you right that's more of a dull narrow band type of filter that really focuses on those areas of the light spectrum but that's not their claim right this is a, a straight up light pollution filter that will allow in ha o3 hydrogen beta and the near infrared so as far as doing what it's supposed to be doing as advertised it is as far as i can tell right with the images that we've looked at it does seem to be doing a pretty decent job of it so that's the review i hope you guys found it useful before we go i want to say thanks to all my members on youtube and on buymeacoffee.com and thank you to all of you that watch share subscribe like the videos it's all very much appreciated i've said it before and i'm going to say it again it's because of you guys' channels where it's at today and it's just growing day by day so until next time see you in the next video and clear skies